In this video, you are going to be able to get all your classic retro games running on your Raspberry Pi 3 with a classic controller of your choice. Sega, Nintendo, Atari, you name it, we'll get it up and running. Super Mario Bros. 3, all your favorite retro games can fit on this little computer and be ran perfectly as you're seeing here. Customize your controls, one player, two player, you name it. We're going to get you started so you can enjoy this retro game just like you did many years ago. So at the bare minimum to get started you will need a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B and this thing does need power and it does need to be connected to display and then you need some sort of input device. So again at the bare minimum I would just go with a basic HDMI cable, 3 feet would be fine and then as far as the power adapter, a little 5 volt it would work just fine. You can also run these off batteries, many other options, but at bare minimum you have to have that. As far as controller options, you can get SNES clone controllers as cheap as $5. Um, also PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 controllers to me make the best controllers because a lot of you have those lying around. And then lastly, the micro SD card. With the micro SD card, I recommend Samsung or SanDisk. Those are kind of my two favorite, but I did a whole uh, thing where I reviewed 15 different uh, SD cards. Uh, as far as size, I would personally go at least 32 or 64, and if you want to really do it up, go with the 128. Don't skimp out and buy a 16 or an 8. Go with the 32 or the 64. In 2018, they're super cheap. Moving on to our computer now, go ahead and put your micro SD card into a micro SD card adapter and put it into your micro SD card slot. Or if you don't have that, you might have to buy a USB adapter to get it to work on your computer. But most computers have a micro SD card slot or, a, or an SD card slot and you can put it with an adapter. And then we need to download two pieces of software here. We need Win32 Disk Imager. Go ahead and download that. Link in the description. And we need to go get RetroPie. Go to the RetroPie website. Go over to Downloads, and here we are. You have RetroPie 0 or 1. So this is where you do need to make a choice. Are you doing this for the Raspberry Pi 3 right here and 2, or for the Raspberry Pi 0, the smaller Raspberry Pi? Pi. I have this one in an NES case. So we're going for the Raspberry Pi 2, 3. We're going to go ahead and click this and then save and download it. It is a 600 megabyte file. Once we've downloaded those files, you're going to open. it's going to open up. It will be in a zip format. Um, you can use WinRAR or WinZip. A lot of computers have that pre-installed, so you should have that already. And what I've done here is I created a new folder and I extracted this uh, WinRAR file into the .img file. So this is the file that we want. This is our RetroPie operating system. It's now extracted. Next thing to do is your SD card should be formatted already. If you do need to format it, you can get SD formatter. It's very easy to do. Drive, format, and it's finished. Okay, then we want to go ahead and open Win32. Once Win32 is opened, you want to make sure on the right device, our J Jive is our micro SD card. As you can see here, I have my micro SD card in my computer. So once it's in your computer, and you have the we have our Raspberry Pi. We're in our desktop Retro Pi. There it is. So now we have this all. We just hit write. Are you sure you want to write this? Yes, we are. And once this is done, we have our Retro Pi fully installed on a micro SD card. After this is complete, we're going to remove it out of the computer and we're going to be putting it in the micro SD card slot on the back side of the Raspberry Pi 3. Once the micro SD card is in, this thing will boot up with an operating system on it. So this portion of the tutorial, I have an Xbox 360 controller wired in, just a standard Xbox 360 controller. I have an HDMI cable going to my monitor. You do not need the audio cable because we're going to get our audio directly through our HDMI as well. And then I have a LAN cable plugged in right here because you could do Wi-Fi, but if you can plug this in via LAN, it's going to make your life so much simpler and you're going to be able to transfer things much quicker. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove my micro SD card from my computer, from the adapter. I'm going to go ahead and undo this, and that is now going into our Pi, and it will stick out just a little bit. Last step is to get the power cord and plug it into the power right next to our, right next to our HDMI. And then these lights are going to turn on. Okay, my Xbox 360 controller is lit up. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over to the Pi. All right, let's turn on the webcam. Great. So we have the Pi on right here. 
we have our Xbox 360 controller right here and uh, we're just gonna it's this this the first the first boot takes a little bit of time if you have a really slow SD card it's gonna take two to three minutes if you have a fast it'll move much quicker all right so we got our Xbox 360 let's go ahead and hold down a we already have it and then we got our d-pad up down left right start select a b x y l r l r if you are doing SNES controls, you would switch the A and the B and the X and the Y. Y would be here, X would be here, B would be here, A would be here versus a regular Xbox 360 controller. Left analog, up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right. And then hotkey enable, I like to use select for that. If you did mess up with anything, you can go ahead and use your D-pad to go back up and change it. You know, for example, the left thumb is if you click in the thumb, if you messed up on that, you can go ahead and go back and fix it. It really doesn't matter. You never use that control anyways. So I wouldn't really worry about that. If you ha if you don't have a control, for example, like not all joysticks have a right analog stick, just go ahead and hold down any button and it'll skip that control. All right, here we are. We're in a fresh boot of RetroPie. Now at this point, you might want to hook up a keyboard to type in your Wi-Fi password. What you do is go into RetroPie right here and within RetroPie, there's Wi-Fi. But because I'm plugged into the network, I'm actually already on the network so all I need to do is move back to my desktop so now what I've done is I'm on my computer and I've opened two windows I hit Windows key and E one window I'm gonna go into wherever I have my ROMs now I can't post where to get ROMs and share with you the exact links but if you look in the comment section below I'm sure a lot of people are gonna show some websites where you can get ROMs very easily Google is one of them. So here I already have many ROMs. I have SNES, NES, you name it, I have it. So on the right side here, I have my network. Go ahead and go to network. And when you click on your network, you should say, see RetroPie. This is one way to access your Pi. Another way to access your Pi is just uh, backslash backslash RetroPie all caps and then hit enter. This will also get you to RetroPie. So this is my actual Pi that you're seeing in the lower left corner that's on right now. We are now accessing it via the network from my laptop computer. And once we're in here, we can go to the ROMs folder and there's already a whole file structure built for each individual system so for example if we wanted let's go ahead and go to NES okay there's nothing in there because we have no games but let's say and here I have all my games so let's say I want Super Mario go down to SU Super Super Mario Brothers Super Mario Brothers 2 Super Mario Bros. 3 it's that fast if I want to do like all the T games for example taboo all the way down to uh, Twin Eagle control C Control V, and you can see how fast it goes. On Wi Fi, it would not go that fast. Moving down the list here, we see you have SNES, so we can go ahead and go back. If we download some SNES ROMs, let's go ahead and go S here. Okay, same thing. Let's just say we want A through C, because we want Contra, right? Gotta have Contra. Get 135 games over there, and uh, because we're going through the, if you're doing this Wi Fi, just give you a heads up. I typically get, yeah, there it is. Okay, that's speeds you would typically get on a, uh, that's Wi-Fi speeds right there. And this is LAN speed. So it's about eight times faster to do this. Or I don't know, I've been, I've been kind of Nintendo loving over here. Let's do some Sega. So that would be under Mega Drive. I know many of you think it's Sega Genesis, but it does come under Mega Drive because RetroPie is a UK company. So they know it as the Mega Drive. Americans know it as the Genesis. So same thing, just different name. All right, so now we have Genesis, NES, and SNES. So let's go ahead and just go back to the Pi over here that's still on, okay? So we're just gonna go ahead. We haven't, let's not, we're not turning anything off. We're not doing anything. Okay, so now I'm back on the Pi. I'm gonna grab my controller here. We just did all those things. B is to go back, A is to go forward whatever you bound those to. And you might notice like, hey, where are these games at? I thought you just added them, Drew. Well, you do have to do a little quick restart. Hit start, quit, restart system. Yes, yes. So are you sure you want to restart? Yes. And then let's just go through a quick restart. All right. Whoa, look at that. All of a sudden, we now have Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, and Nintendo. The same systems we just added. And look at that all of those games remember we got the T's in there we got Tetris now all that good stuff we have Mega Drive and you might be wondering well how come there's no pictures 
So we the next thing we want to do is get artwork. So let's go ahead and hit start. Go to scraper. We want to scrape from the games DB. Yep, scrape ratings on. Scrape now. Um, user decision conflicts. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And we only want to do it for the missing images, and we want it to do for all three systems, right? Super Nintendo, Nintendo, and Second Mega Drive. So let's go ahead and start. And because again we're connected to the internet, if you're not connected to the internet, this is not going to work. But what this is going to do now is going to search databases on the internet and go ahead and get us the box art for all 238 games we just added. No matter how many games you added, 50 or even 100, it'll go ahead and do this for you. All right, we're back. 232 games successfully scraped. That looks good. So now, when we're in SNES, we have our box art. When we go back to Nintendo, we have our box art. All right, so here we have Verse Super Mario Brothers. Go ahead and press A to launch it. And look at that. We already configured our controller. We got our Raspberry Pi up and running. And here we are. Let's go ahead and turn on this webcam so you can see the controller here. And again, I didn't change my controls. Do you know something interesting about this level? Is it doesn't allow you to go backwards, so you're forced to go forwards. So you actually learn the game as you um, as you play it. Um, for example, let's uh, oh, to exit. By the way, it's your hotkey. It's select and start at the same time. But let's go back in here. I wanted to share this with you because it's really interesting. If you were playing this game for the first time and you're just going forward like this and you don't know what everything does, okay, and you realize, okay, this guy is bad. So then you play it again, and this time you know it's bad. And remember, let's pretend we don't know that mushrooms are good. Okay. And then we get the mushroom. But we realize we can't go back. So it almost forces you to get the mushroom. There's no way to really avoid it if you are playing a natural way where you're running forward because you can't run backwards. So it teaches you just in those few seconds, it teaches you you do have to go forward, which is to the right. You have to go this way on the map. It teaches you that there's enemies that you have to die and it teaches you that mushrooms are actually good. So rather than reading an instruction manual, <laughs> you um, literally learn the game as you're, as you're playing. So really cool stuff there. Something maybe some of us take for granted. And uh, again, my controls are not configured properly on my A and my B for the Xbox style controller. But uh, there you go. Start select out. And we go B back again. And here we are in Mega Drive Super Nintendo. And for example, if we want to play Adam's Family. All right, here you are. In the oh. Get your money. Got to have all that money. And uh, Mega Drive. So you want Aladdin, great game. Oh, you can't jump on him. <laughs> Whoops. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I've done a lot of follow-up videos as well, but this is going to get you guys started on this. It's very, very easy to do, as you can see. You can play up to PlayStation 1, Dream, some Dreamcast, and some Nintendo 64, and everything before it from Commodore 64, Atari, uh, MAME, a lot, a lot, a lot of games you can play on this. But this is going to get you started into the realm. It's very easy to do. Don't be intimidated by it. If you do have any questions, don't forget to comment below. A lot of people are really good about answering questions out there in the community, so just comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and share this if you think it might help somebody else that you know. And with that, we'll see you on the next one.